Hello, hello, Mordimer is here and welcome to the game, which I just know uh, that happened yesterday because I was watching a uh, young Krzysztof Duda interview or maybe that was the questions and answers from the fans uh, on the chess24.com platform. And he said about one of his games that this was the most exciting game um, he has ever played in his life uh, or maybe in the recent times uh, in the couple of last couple of years, uh, at least uh, he remembers that. So uh, it happened in 2019 during the Grand Chess Tour in Paris. So this was the Rapid Time Control Tournament and Jan Krzysztof Duda Rapid uh, ranking at that time was 2731. Uh, he was 21 years old in this game. Uh, he was playing as white and his opponent chess veteran Alexander Grishuk, one of the strongest Russian grandmasters in rapid time control, his ranking 2744 in this game he's going to play as black. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board as this game is really, really crazy. So we can understand why uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda said that was the most exciting um, game he played. Knight f3, that is the opening ready, opening after d5. We have c4 and now black has a couple of options here um c6 so uh of course e3 can be possible but also the white can uh, transpose to uh to semi-slav defense also another options would be e6 going for the english opening or d takes on c4 uh, that would be the ready accepted however we have advanced variation with the d4 uh, and here g3 is the main idea uh playing some kind of the catalan bishop also very, very tricky line. However, Jan Krzysztof Duda went for b4. Now, what is the idea? First, the bishop goes to the to the b2 and together with the knight, um, they're gonna attack the pawn. And also keep in mind that this pawn cannot support because of course, um, the e5 is controlled by the knight. So it's a pretty tricky idea. Also, a c5 is not that easy. I mean, it's playable. However, black has to know variations with the, with the for example, taking the at the pawn on c5 and then what to do with this pawn in the center very tricky uh, and what happened um, next we have f6 so this is the idea actually uh, to create this chain uh, and the position looks very solid but at the same time look at the light squares there are gonna be the problems on this diagonal for example so the bishop would like to get to this diagonal maybe on this diagonal uh, the queen also can come already on the light squares on this diagonal but maybe also on this diagonal so a lot of of uh, tricky things um, going on around them, the king. So black have to be very, very careful. But this is well-known variation, at least for Jan Krzysztof Duda. He was prepared uh, really, really well. Um, and at the beginning, he make, you know, he blitz all the moves. Uh, we have, of course, e3. Now opening the diagonal for uh, both of the light square pieces. Uh, and now we have e5 as planned. And now c5. So c5 by the black pieces is not possible anymore. And now e5, uh, undermining the best uh, of this little chain. And of course, e3 is not possible because after exchanging, the rook on a1 is hanging. That's the problem. This is why we have queen a4. Pretty crazy stuff. Already the pawn is pinned um, because the rook is hanging also for, for black pieces. Uh, we have queen d7 blocking. And now bishop b5 pinning the queen um, to the king. So c6 is the only option. And bishop, of course, a retreat. So we have c4. Bishop did uh, the really great job on b5. And now the bishop goes to the this diagonal controlling the light squares uh, and now d takes on e3 this is one of the main ideas and knight e7 actually taking under control c6 as b5 is definitely coming on some point uh, so knight e7 is a very very natural move however we have knight a6 quite the sideline here uh, and now before pushing them the pawn first e takes on d4 and now the things uh, where everything starts to be very tricky so for example example, black uh, shouldn't take this pawn. This is not really great because this pawn is impossible to defend and white can simply cast 
castle um, and after let's say a takes on b4 rook e1 and the king gonna stay in the center and a really not comfortable position uh, for black so instead of that alexander grishu goes for e4 and this is even more tricky because now the knight has nowhere to go because knight is defender of the pawn on d4 so if the knight is moved wherever doesn't really matter the queen jumps to d4 attacking the bishop attacking the rook and winning one piece uh, and probably the game so uh very tricky position this is why now we have b5 saying okay you can take my knight i can take your knight what would happen if that uh, if that actually uh, gonna be on the board so let's check e takes on f3 b takes on a6 and now queen d4 doesn't work because boom discovered uh, attack on the queen and the check and black would completely lose the game so rather f takes on g2 and after rook g1 uh, it's still playable but if you think okay there is the very easy uh, way to continue here and you can actually go for that rook uh, you are wrong this is not the greatest continuation because after queen h3 a takes on b7 uh, bishop b7 then there is knight c3 and now after queen h to knight e2 saves the day uh, because now the rook is uh, protected and also d5 is coming and once this pawn disappears the king gonna be completely naked in the center and that's gonna be lost for black so black also has to know the theory here this is why we have knight before uh, so it starts to be very tricky now because this knight is still under attack uh, this pawn is still under attack so uh, what to do a3 by Jan Krzysztof Duda definitely he was completely prepared and now there is no way that a black actually gonna gonna still continue jumping actually it's possible however uh, white gonna be uh, really great here because knight, now knight g1 the queen doesn't have the attack on d4 anymore probably knight f4 and then after knight c3 uh, let's say a knight g2 king f1 um, the knight actually can be on time uh, to block the attack on the g2 so that's one of the variations let's say knight e7 then b takes on c6 knight takes on c6 uh, and after bishop b2 again the king is in the center the rook can come to e1 pretty much very dangerous position for the for the black king so uh, this is still not possible to to actually jump with this knight this is why now we have e takes on f3 and now a takes on b4 so what just happened here the queen actually now defends the rook so uh, we have queen d4 attacking only the bishop uh, and now d3 just defending pretty simple queen e5 uh, with the check we have bishop e3 blocking and only now f takes on g2 now uh, attacking the rook so rook g1 and now queen h2 would be too early because it's completely double edge crazy position uh, however if black actually decide to take the problem is that white actually gonna be faster with the attack b takes on c6 look at this and now even if the if the queen takes the takes the rook there is the problem king d2 and how you gonna continue how you gonna continue there is the huge problem because now the pawn gonna take on the on the c7 uh, and then win the rook this is the discovered check that's the first thing of course if the if the pawn takes on the on the c6 it's gonna be uh very similar also losing that rook um, and the position of the king is just lost so probably king d8 but then knight c3 developing move with the tempo on the queen and if black want to save the queen then actually actually knight d5 with the very nice thread c7 and look at this the queen and the knight actually controls all the squares around pretty crazy stuff so uh black would have to actually sacrifice them the queen on the c7 for example after b takes on uh c6 queen c6 for now the the the, the rook is under attack so um uh, the rook actually cannot move because if the rook is moved to a7 uh this rook gonna be lost because together with the knight 
so that's gonna be lost uh, also rook b8 doesn't work because this queen f4 and forking and the queen and the rook so that's another option and finally if knight d7 for example attacking the uh, the queen the queen of course can take the rook because why not but also queen b6 is completely enough and now after king e8 then bishop f4 attacking the queen and if queen actually escapes then knight c7 very nice fork uh but look at this king d7 that would end with the checkmate um, and if king d8 the problem is again queen d6 and now we're gonna have checkmate as well uh, the queen actually could defend um, e8 but of course the queen would be lost and as well the game so pretty much crazy stuff but black i cannot take this pawn very complicated game 97 now defending c6 finally uh, and now the stockfish actually recommends to go for rook g2 just eliminate that just defend the pawn um so what would be the problem for for white actually after bishop d7 and, and d4 kicking the queen a queen e4 attacking the rook so rook g1 and after knight f5 there is some troubles in the center this is very very dangerous for for white probably knight c3 kicking the queen a uh, queen h4 now making some pins here uh, with the attack on them on the bishop that would be also some threat uh, so what would, could happen is queen h2 and uh, maybe Yannick Duda didn't want to actually you know play against give too many counter play on the king side for black uh, I'm not sure however this is what a uh, stockfish actually really really likes and saying okay uh white have really huge advantage now uh, but Jan Krzysztof Duda plays more human move, 92 very nice defending move, which actually uh, Stockfish doesn't like at all. Um, we have bishop d7 and now rook g2. Stockfish says again rook g2 goes for go for this variation. This is really good for you, but Janek Duda prefers b takes on a5. And this actually gives um, Alexander Grishuk pretty good counterplay and very nice resources. What he should play is knight f5 he went for knight d5 so he saw the idea but knight f5 is much more precise why because the knight actually controls d4 very important square and still attacking the bishop so um, now for example rook g2 bishop c5 and now three pieces actually uh, attacks the bishop so out of nowhere this attack came uh, would ca would come out of nowhere so after let's say knight f3 queen e7 and still white um, didn't achieve anything black has very strong attack in the center and white have to be very precise in the in the defense not with the attack anymore but in the defense so this stuff would be extremely crazy white would have to play something like like rook g4 with some threads on the on the e4 but but the position is completely crazy but as i said we have knight d5 with the very similar idea but there is one difference d4 now is possible with the knight on f5 it was not possible and now we have queen h2 attacking the rook we have also knight f3 defending the rook and attacking the queen this is why this move is the very much human move and maybe not like by stockfish but you already see the idea is really really great so we have queen h5 and now Jan Krzysztof Duda plays absolutely the best move in the position boom a6 and now the position is completely crazy now what is going on here because this knight is under attack so can actually black take the knight knight is for free why not to take it the problem with this move is actually a takes on b7 sacrifice the queen and after rook a4 then just promote to the queen the king has to go somewhere a uh, king f7 then take the rook on a4 and after let's say c takes on b5 uh rook a7 uh pin the bishop uh, and now after b takes on c4 rook d7 knight can yes retreat but the rook and the bishop are still in the troubles so uh white have d5 uh, and it looks like completely winning for white however white still have to be very careful look at this c3 d6 c2 
and now it looks okay this bishop actually controls c1 what can go wrong actually black can sacrifice the queen win this bishop and once it's taken then promote uh, to the queen and win so white have to go for the king d2 and after let's say king e6 rook e7 bishop e7 and pick up this rook so this bishop is lost has nowhere to go probably bishop d6 and after exchanging everything white actually has the bishop and the rook uh, extra so uh, and the king is in the center so the queen of course uh can get and deliver a couple of checks uh, and bring the the queen to the center and win the game so a uh, queen f3 is not possible to take so what to play bishop e7 alexander grishuk finally said okay my king is in the danger my king is in the danger so i should probably castle now ah, better um, late than never uh we have eight takes on b7 look at this jan krzysztof duda sacrificed the queen eight takes on b7 and then not much uh, black can do if black moves actually um then we're gonna have b takes on c6 uh, with the attack on the on the bishop then uh this pawn's gonna roll and win the game so uh completely crazy position this this is why Alexander Grishuk has to actually accept and now here this is the trick because white cannot promote to the queen now it's pretty insane but this move would be losing because after king f7 now the queen is under attack and this rook is also under attack so let's say queen h8 and after taking that rook king d2 rook g1 and knight g1 um, and then c takes on b5 uh, this bishop actually have to move somewhere d3 uh, and then bishop f8 actually trapping the queen look at this what a beautiful trap and now the knight gonna come and pick up the queen so there is only one way to actually uh, escape from there exchanging the queen so queen h7 queen h7 bishop h7 but then g6 trapping this bishop and uh, and yeah game over what uh, white can do is try to take that pawn uh and just to free the pieces but of course uh, knight e3 f takes on e3 and now b4 and this pawn gonna gonna win for example king f2 b3 uh, and then this knight can try to stop but everything uh with two bishops these two bishops are free to go and this bishop is actually locked over there so for example bishop h6 now going after this pawn if the pawn is moved then bishop e3 anyway and now the bishop cannot be taken because of the promotion so king g2 now winning the pawn attacking the the knight so knight b1 now bishop a4 and going after the, the knight and winning the game so for example king f3 now uh, bishop c2 and after that uh, is all over because after changing uh, of course black can simply stop that pawn and this bishop gonna be lost as well so pretty crazy stuff very nice uh, trap we cannot just promote yet this is why Jan Krzysztof Duda goes for rook a4 and now finally Alexander Grishu can uh, can castle and take under control b8 the stuff is crazy so Jan Krzysztof Duda actually in this moment uh, is down the queen I mean it's the queen for the rook but definitely he is down the material he has to do something about these pawns uh, he cannot take this pawn because of course uh, the bishop can take uh, so we have rook a8 the best move in the position uh, now the rook cannot take and here Alexander Grishuk actually uh, still have pretty nice chances just he have to find a very important move uh, c takes on b5 now what is the idea uh, the bishop should move of course still stay um, on this diagonal and here black actually can take the knight now uh, because now after rook f8 and bishop f8 uh, white actually don't come with the with the check so uh, promoting to the queen and then simply bishop g4 boom there is the mating idea here so uh queen b5 defending uh, e2 also defending d1 uh, and now after king h8 uh unpinning uh then 
probably queen c4 and then if the knight is moved then we would have the checkmate on the on the g8 pretty crazy stuff uh it's not surprised that it's impossible to to actually calculate all of that uh, bishop e6 look at this this is insane king d2 and now for example knight f4 attacking the queen defending the bishop and also uh, potentially attacking um the promotion square of the of this pawn because this pawn is still stays on g2 so pretty crazy stuff if the queen moves somewhere also the queen can come to to e2 and the king can be in the troubles so that was chance for alexander grishuk however he has another plan rook e8 uh, rook e8 is like more than like a human move we have king d2 and now king f8 uh, moving from the pin so now the the knight is uh, free to go but now we have rook e8 queen e8 now still keeping an eye on the on the b8 and now you can actually pause the video and find the winning continuation for white so imagine you are young Krzysztof Duda uh, you have the, the rook for the queen so you are down in material but there is one move which is winning in this position and I'm gonna enjoy my cup of tea okay ready uh, I think that was not a very very difficult what we have to do is bring the bishop to f4 and then promote to the queen the only problem is the is the knight so it's enough if we actually um, take the knight so we have bishop d5 uh, and now if the, the bishop is taken and then of course we're gonna have bishop f4 and now black cannot do anything white gonna promote the pawn and uh, even g5 still this this is the promotion uh, taking the bishop but after exchanging the queens uh, of course white's completely winning uh this pawns um, gonna win the game they can be stopped for now but of course the knight can help um to to actually continue uh, also the rook can take down on on g2 i can try to pick up more pawns or even support these pawns um, and uh, black would have to actually uh, sacrifice one of the bishops and that would be completely winning uh, of course for white so that doesn't work this is why we have bishop d8 setting up very nice trap so alexander grishuk tries to set up the trap now what is the trap if white actually uh, goes for the promotion look at this this is losing move again again so promotion is the is the losing move again this time is not difficult to spot bishop a5 with check and discover attack on the queen so completely winning for black now for example king e2 taking the queen uh, and now uh this pawn is lost so probably b takes on c6 uh, but now queen b5 and now queen and the bishop gonna gonna win the game the king has nowhere to go somewhere like king d1 but then simply bishop g4 pinning the the knight the knight is defender of the rook so uh, just imagine um this knight is taken and then queen just jump to f1 and, uh, and yeah win the rook and then uh, and the game uh, if bishop d2 for example then again bishop f3 bishop f3 and now queen f1 is winning or even queen uh, d3 is faster because this is the checkmate king c1 queen d2 uh, and this would be the of course um, the checkmate so again pretty crazy stuff promotion is losing again uh, so bishop f4 was played by Jan Krzysztof Duda so he figured out that this is the trap we have bishop a5 and after king d1 Alexander Grishuk resigned the game was insane so we can understand why Jan Krzysztof Duda said that this was the most exciting game he has um, ever played that's uh, that's really really um, insane and why did he resign because um, even if uh, he takes them the bishop then of course the promotion is coming and even if the you know all the exchanges uh, win the pawn then this pawn gonna be lost and white still have the rook so being rook up of course is enough to win the game uh, so this is why Alexander Grishuk uh, finally resigned the game is just insane and if you like this game and this kind of games press like if for some reason you don't like it press and like and if you don't want to miss other crazy games on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one